Well, guys, we almost made it. This is almost the end of 2020, the 27th of December. I can't believe we're here. We're at the end. This is the finish line is in sight and we need to finish well. Everybody knows that this has been quite an unusual year and that's putting it mildly for sure. But one thing I like to do at the end of every year is kind of look back at where God has been showing up and kind of see his fingerprints in the midst of everything that's been going on. And it's a little bit harder to do perhaps for some of us this year than in normal years, because in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of the turmoil, in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of an election year, in the middle of social and racial unrest in our country, where half of California was literally on fire and not to mention murder hornets, right? But God was still at work. God still did some really rad stuff, not only in our lives as a church, but in your life as an individual. And if you don't take time to ponder and think about what those things are, you'll miss out on the blessing that's coming next. And so I want to challenge you this week as we sort of wrap up our year and we prepare ourselves for 2021, that we would just pause for a moment and reflect. I think it's important to reflect on what God's been doing in our lives. I think it's important to pause for a moment and let people know, the people that have been in our lives, how important they are to us and how grateful we are to us. And so I want to take you to a passage of scripture today, um, Philippians, Philippians chapter one, and we're going to look at the verses um, just kind of as an overview of Philippians. And we're just going to live in verse one or in chapter one this morning, but I want to kind of give you some context as you're finding your way. Um, Philippians is a letter that Paul writes while he's in prison. Um, Paul's in prison for um, being a, a, prove, a provider of the gospel, the truth, the love of God to the world around him, and the Roman Empire doesn't like this. Now, the church at Philippi, the letter to the Philippians, is the first church, the first Christian church, the first Jesus-following church in Eastern Europe. And so the fact that there's this is the first one in all of Eastern Europe, now Philippi is a Roman province, and so they're pretty used to the oppression and uh, sort of systematic mistreatment of, of Christians, and because Romans and Christians, they don't get along. Remember, these are the same people that wound up hanging Jesus on the cross. And so he's writing them to thank them, ultimately. The letter is to thank them for a gift, a financial gift that they had sent to help further not only Paul's ministry, but the ministry of the, of the churches all throughout Asia Minor as well, and now even into, as we're starting to get up into what we would now call modern day Eastern Europe. And so he's writing in this thank you letter, and he sends a message back to through a, a young man by the name of Aphroditus. Now, not Aphrodite, that would be a Greek goddess, but Aphroditus. Um, and his name is most likely is a derivative of, of the Greek god's name. There was a lot of co-mingling and intermarriage that was happening. And so faith and relationships and culture has sort of worn off on everybody. But Paul's big goal, big focus in Philippians chapter one is reflecting on how faithful and generous and kind and awesome that the church has been to his ministry and to the ministry of the churches in the network of churches that Paul helped plant. And he wanted to kind of say, this year, you guys have done some amazing things to bless us. So let's read it together. Grab your Bibles. Let's look at it together and let's read. He says, I thank my God every time that I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on until completion, until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. What a beautiful thing to say to someone who's been a supporter of you. It's right for me to feel joy. It's right for me to be happy when I think of you. It's right for me when I recall the time that you've supported me. It's right for me to feel this way because you are in my heart. And he says, so it's right for me to feel this way because you're in my heart. Whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how long for all of you with the affection of Christ. And so he says, I long to be with you with the love of Jesus. 
You know, like only God himself could tell you, could make you really understand how much I love you, appreciate you, I'm thankful for you. And in really, if you wanted to sum up what Paul has been saying, and the reason I really wanted to take us to this passage today is he's saying, even though we're far apart, we're still partners in ministry. Even though we don't get to be face to face, we're still partners in ministry. We're still bringing hope to the world one person at a time. The work that you've been doing, even at a distance, is powerful God's work. And I want you to know that you're partnering with me. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that, not just in the context of Hope City Church, not just in the context of Christianity, not in just the context of the church at Philippi, but in the context of your own life. Who are the people that you need to be thankful for that have helped you through some hard times in this season? Who in 2020 was there for you? Who was there in the thick and the thin, in the ride or the die, right? Who was with you the whole time? And in the best way for you to reflect on what God's been doing is to pause just for a moment right now and think about those people. Philippians 1, 4, and 5 says, in all my prayers... For all of you, I pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. He wants them to know, I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. And the reason that I appreciate you, the reason I'm grateful for you is what you do with me, even though it's at a distance, it makes it possible for us to do great things all around the world. I can identify with this. I am so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for you as the people of Hope City Church, whether you live in San Diego or you live in other parts of the country or other parts of the world. I'm so grateful for you as you tune in and you pray for us and you financially support the ministry and the, minist- and the ministries of Hope City Church as we partner with different ministry partners all around the world, not only to just build houses for the poor in Mexico, but to, to educate and help refugees, not only in in Syria, but in Turkey and in Lebanon. I'm grateful that you're doing things to bring relief to the people of Beirut after the large explosion that happened this year, that you were there to bring food to people here in San Diego, that you've been partnering as to plant churches all throughout the United States. I mean, it's a powerful thing to say we are a part of the kingdom of God coming to earth. When Jesus says, In his prayer, when the disciples said, teach us how to pray, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done. You are making the kingdom of God come to earth through your actions. And so right now, I just want to tell you, as your pastor, I am thankful for you, for your time, talent, treasure, your testimony, for your attendance, even when we're just online, for your your willingness to support and to show up and to be a part of the ministry and the mission of bringing hope to the world one person at a time. But it's more than just corporate church that we're talking about. Sometimes you have to just pause and reflect on who did you share the journey with this year? As I think about this, I think about some of the people in my life. I think about my wife, of course. I think about my children. Um, I, think about, I think about my board members, Randy um, and, and John and Doug and Jessica. I think about them coming alongside of us and supporting us throughout this whole year. I think about super consistent and faithful volunteers, um, like our staff teams, like our ministry teams, like the stuff that they've done. And so when Paul says in verse seven, whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, I share God's grace with all of you. All of you sharing God's grace with me. In other words, you make it possible for the Word of God to change the lives of people around you. Who are the people that you work with in your office building, in in your teaching group, at at your school, uh, on the job site? Who are the people that have been with you on this journey this year? And what is it that you need to say to them? How do you need to remember them? How do you need to thank them? Before it gets too far into 2021, would you take a moment and just make a list of those people and thank them? And thank them for who they are and what they've been doing. When we talk about this reflection, this idea of looking back on a year and wrapping it up before we move on to the next one, it's good to look for the evidence that God was working in your life. It's easy for us to be moving so fast to get out of 2020, the dumpster fire of a year that it's been, and we think that as soon as January 2021 hits, it's going to be obviously magical and wonderful. Now, we'll talk more about that next week a little bit and how when you get into a new season, you get into a new place, a new space, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be wonderful. Some of the stuff that you left comes with you into that new place. 
But the best way for you not to repeat the lessons that you've been learning and going through the stuff that you've been going through is for you to pay attention to where God showed up and blessed you and took care of you. In verse 6, we see Paul saying that he's confident that God began a good work in the lives of the people of Philippi. That he's confident that the God who began this great work is going to be faithful until it's completed. Faithful until the day of Christ's return. And so why he's telling them this is, yes, you've been so faithful at extending hope to the world, but I also want you to know that God sees you, that he knows what you're going through, he knows what you need, and he has not abandoned you, he has not left you, he's going to be faithful. And it might feel like this is a season, but if you were to go back and think about some of the places and spaces that God showed up, you might be surprised what a blessing it was. This is why journaling is so important. If you don't write down the victories, how do you know, how do you remember the victories? How do you keep track of the victories? I like to do it with my own personal life and my family life. I like to do it with Instagram. I like to do it by taking pictures of moments when I'm with my family. I like to use specific hashtags. I use hashtag Roundtree Tribe, hashtag Roundtree Family. I use hashtag Roundtree Holiday. And these are ways for me to be able to go back and look at the things that God has done and remember Him's blessing, remember that we're all healthy and happy. And even though it was hard times, we made it through to the next season. Whatever it looks like for you, whether you're actually old school journaling or you've come up with your own hashtag so that you're able to see what God's done in the past year and pay attention to it, I really want to challenge you to be celebrating the things that God's been done because there are fingerprints, there are evidence of God working in your life. The year might be over, but I'm going to tell you something right now, church. The mission of God in your life, as Paul would say it, whenever he was out defending or confirming the gospel, right? The mission isn't over. 2020 is going to be over in just a few days, but the mission of God in your life, his purpose and his calling in your life is just begun. In fact, if you look at Galatians chapter 6, 9, you can turn there if you want, but you don't have to. He says, Let us don't, let's, let's not become weary in doing good. For in the proper time, we'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. In other words, the end is near, but we need to finish strong. If we give up just before the fruit is ripe, if we give up just before the harvest is ready, then all of the work is worthless. Now, I know that this has been an unprecedented year, and I know that you've went through some hard times. I get it. I understand it. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it with you. I'm living it with you. I'm walking it with you in real time. But I also know this. In the grand scheme of your life, this is a short season. And that God has more in store for not only you as an individual, but for us as a church. And if we can be faithful to the mission to bring hope to the world, that we could meet the needs of the people that God's entrusted to us emotionally, physically, spiritually, if we could use our belief, our firm belief, and we don't go to church, we are the church. To bring the gospel of Jesus into the highways and the byways, into the stores and the restaurants and the bars when they open back up, then we will have an opportunity in our workplaces, in our schools, in our families, in our neighborhoods to make a difference in the lives of the people he's entrusted to us. Keep reading with me, Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. He says, this is my prayer that you that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is the best and you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. And so what he's saying is, is my prayer for you as you reflect, as I'm reflecting on my relationship with you from afar, as I'm reflecting on what's been going, for, going on in your life, I know you've been experiencing oppression for being Christians in a Roman province. I know that this is the first church in that province, plus not only in that province, but in that region of the world. And you guys have not only been faithful to do the work of God in your community, but even to go outside of your four walls, that Jerusalem, Judea, end of the world mentality. And you guys are really doing that. I'm so proud of you. But I want you to make good decisions moving forward. I want you to be ready and prepared to make a big difference that you can go all in for Jesus. Now, if this was Pastor Eric talking, not Paul, I would say it like this, that you could go all in for Jesus in 2021, that nothing could hold you back, that nothing would carry over that's negative from 2020 into 2021, that you would be able to go to God in prayer and deal with the stuff and fix the stuff that's broken and, 
and begin to build bridges and repair broken relationships so that when 2021 does arrive in just a few days, that our hearts and our minds are prepared for the mission and the journey that's ahead of us. So what needs to change for you to focus more on God's mission for your life for next year? What are the distractions? Have you picked up some bad COVID-19 habits? Right? It's, it's hard when you work at home and you can just wear sweatpants and, you know, like, you know, the, the, the business casual now is like the mullet of clothes, right? Like I'm business on top and party on the bottom. Sweatpants and shorts, but then dress up on top because you can't see me anyway, right? It, 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 have my eating habits got out of whack? Do, has my physical, uh, like my... Am I going to the gym? Am I working out? Am I, is my mind in the right place? Am I taking care of myself? Am I devotions where they need to be? Have I just started going to church online instead of being the church? What are some habits that you need to bring into alignment, into the alignment of God's plans and purposes for your life to prepare you to be ready to serve, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in 2021? Do you need to develop your character to become more loving? It's been a tough year, so we've kind of been a little bit introspective, a little bit focused on us. We've been hoarding toilet paper, right, and sanitizers and bleaches and cleaners and watching people argue and fight and, you know, like over who's going to be president or whether what lives matter. Well, let me tell you something right now. If you look at verse 9, he says, This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more. And so right now in this moment, I want you to ask God to give you discernment because you're going to have some decisions to make as you wrap up this year and you prepare yourself for next year. This is a natural season where we sort of do an inventory and clean up and then we start to make what we call resolutions, right? Big plans and dreams, schemes for the next year so that we can make it better than the year before. Philippians 1.10 says it like this, so that you may be able to discern what is best. As you reflect on 2020, I want you to consider, is your life been producing the results that you want to celebrate or is it producing results that you need to change? Like, do you need to change so that you can get the results you need? If you keep on doing what you're doing, are you going to wind up where you want to go? Or are you going to be stuck in the same space and place that you've been stuck in for so long already? My challenge for you today is to really be thinking about that. Verse 11 says it like this, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And so I want you to do this. I want you to write down somewhere. Maybe you're feeling bold right now and you want to type it in the chat. What's one thing that you most want to see God do in and through you in the new year? What is it that you need God to show up and help you do so that you can accomplish not only your personal life goals, but the goals that keep you on mission to not just go to church to be the church, to bring hope to the world one person at a time so that you can meet the needs of the people God's entrusted to you, both emotionally, physically, and spiritually. What's that one thing? And so I want you to just take a few moments Maybe talk it out with the people that are with you. Maybe text a friend right now. Maybe grab your journal and spend some time in prayer with a cup of coffee and ask God to reveal to you that discernment, right? And I want to. I want you to do all those three things real quick, right? Write them down and do them where you like, think about where God has shown up in your life, where you think about the people who have been with you the whole time this year and what needs to be different next year and who is going to help you accomplish those dreams, not only God, but the people he surrounds you with. All right, guys, I am excited. We only have a couple days left, and 2020 is over, and 2021 is going to be a year where God does something amazing in us. I don't know if everything in the world is going to be great. It probably isn't, but God is good, and we're going to follow him wherever he leads us. So I hope that you end this well, year well. Be safe as you celebrate. Have a great time. We'll see you guys next year.